you have entered the Chronix rabbit hole. And Carol, thank you so much for your Patreon membership request. And also, thank you for bringing back Base Culture's interview with Troy Donaghy this time. And we love the last ones that you did. So I'm sure this one's going to be awesome because he's also hungover. So can't wait. Thank you so much, Carol, for bringing these amazing interviews down the rabbit hole. We love the interaction between Face Culture and the Night Wish band. And I can't wait to see this hungover Troy because we know he's funny and this is going to be amazing. All right. <laughs> she went far. Right. <laughs> Thank you again, Carol, for bringing another face culture interview down the rabbit hole. These interviews are amazing because of the rapport that they have with the band. Yeah, amazing and chemistry. This chemistry is just phenomenal. So I'm really excited that we now have Troy coming down the rabbit hole. We've already seen Floor. We've already seen Tuamas. Yeah. And I can't wait to see because maybe... We'll have someone else coming down, but I don't actually know because I don't know what all the interviews face culture has done. But if there are, let us know. And without further ado, remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more Enter the Chronicness. I'm really excited for this because normally Troy is with people while doing an interview and some of his friends can kind of keep him in a little more control. So he's going to be able to be let loose. It was just Floor's birthday. So he's all hung over now. I'm really excited for this. All jokes aside, yes. this is going to be awesome. I'm sure it's an amazing interview. And here we go. And to get all of them individually too. So hi, Troy. Hello. How are you? How are you? Good. Surprisingly good. It's been busy, <laughs> busy couple of days and, uh, we were celebrating Flo's birthday last night, so I'm a little bit sensitive. <laughs> a little bit sensitive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, well, yeah, we have a lot to talk about because there's a whole new record. and, and Yeah. Um, well, you did a lot of other things as well. But first, I want to start with kind of a, it's quite a general, I and mean, maybe it's not a good question, but we'll see. Um, but ever since... Uh, you joined with Nightwish and you made all different kinds of mu music over your career and now you've yeah. been kind of sucked into this metal world and uh, <laughs> recently you did uh, something with uh, Apocalyptica. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, oh, Sinatra oh, Arctica cool. as well and a few of those. Nice. Right, and then, so, so what has this oh, experience wow, we just been them out. for you to kind of become it's, part of this metal world? In I, I absolutely love it because yeah. I discovered that it is the, a good question. the metal scene the the metal world as you call it is is not only is it full of integrity and genuine music lovers yeah who exactly. still want physical product who still want to look exactly. at booklets and read lyrics mm -hmm. but it's also yeah. just brilliant fun yeah you know exactly. and it's so diverse you know, there's so many different genres of metal i mean there's everything isn't there there's every type of metal <laughs> You can imagine. Sure. I mean, umpa metal, you know, Bavarian umpa band metal. There's everything. So it's it's. There I is. found myself in a really uh, colourful world, you know, mm -hmm. musically, which is fantastic. Because is is there something uh, maybe that you can share that that you've. Since you play a lot of instruments, you, you're, you're yeah, a little musician. bit. Yeah, just a so couple. Yeah, something that you've learned from this uh, type of music, or maybe from just the last couple of years being in this. Uh, I think the main thing that I've learned about uh, being in Nightwish and being in the metal scene is that anything really, anything goes. You know, and yeah, I can. Exactly. Um, I, I enjoy the fusion of it all. I enjoy being able to take. Uh, less mainstream instruments into metal. Mm -hmm. uh, not just folky instruments, but sounds as well. I like to, I like to take different it's atmospheres Evo. into mm -hmm. metal. Right. You know, like including uh, electric guitar. I, I get to do quite a bit of electric guitar in the band now, which okay. is really nice. Uh, just to, there you go. to back up Empu, mm. you know, because uh, Empu is <laughs> a phenomenal guitar player. Mm -hmm. yes, um, yes. But I like to we do um, textural things, right. uh, and I come yes, from a does. very progressive rock background, so it, oh, I'm, nice. I'm, I'm very floydy yeah, exactly. in, in my <laughs> approach to that kind of thing. So um, I really delight in that, in, in being in the metal scene and subverting it with, with obscure instruments and, uh, and unusual textures. Right, because... He's such a kind, generous, funny 
person in general so mm-hmm. his responses are just the same right and like he he thought it was a bad question at first and he was more just like apprehensive it's like i don't know if this is the best question to start with but like no like metal really is this big yeah it is a world and like there is no limits and that's why i think if everyone gives it an honest chance i think everyone would love metal because Absolutely. there is everything for people there's something for someone somewhere in the metal or a community. feature with a rapper with yeah. some metal if you need the rap or whatever else you need well, like we even saw um <laughs> oh what's her name starts with an s i can't remember oh sharon he, sharon from within temptation from within temptation featured with um, electronic music the electronic music yeah so exactly. like there's you can blend it all together. Everything can be blended and it all can work somewhere. You, you, we all need Troys. We all need a Troy. <laughs> the Floydian one. <laughs> is, is there a, um, a certain feel that you're looking for in certain tracks? Because obviously uh, Thomas also writes a lot of the yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Are you, are you looking for certain specific textures? I mean, maybe for this album in particular? Uh, yeah, absolutely. And on this album especially, but as a kind of um, uh, testing ground for the new album, the last tour that we did, uh, mm-hmm. the Decades Tour, was all very old songs from the Nightwish catalogue yeah. mm-hmm. that were reinvigorated and rearranged uh, for the band as it is now, as this six-piece band. Right. So right. that was really interesting to, to uh, inject new colours into those old yeah. songs. Right and make them sound a bit different while still keeping the essence of, of that's the songs. amazing so again the the most satisfying thing is is moving around in the metal world but from a different angle you right know? and i just spoke to thomas and he mentioned that he also tried to challenge you on a, on a couple of songs with with kind of the union pipes and <laughs> yeah it's a, it's a, it's a common th- it's it's been common uh, for the last well how long have i been playing the pipes forever but they're such a a difficult instrument mm. you know i mean not only are they they really difficult to, to play but they're difficult to fit into uh, into certain types of music yeah mm-hmm. but at the same time they're the most um flexible uh, and uh, so much control i suppose mm. they're the most eloquent sounding bagpipe Mm. They're very lyrical sounding, so they can they can fit into any kind yeah. of music. Yes, they are, and sound sound splendid or beautiful. But they're limited as to what you can do with them because they're fixed pitch. Even though I've got a, a custom set of pipes that I can play in any okay. key, they're very reluctant to play in certain keys. Okay. And Thomas has a really bad habit of throwing ridiculous key signatures <laughs> at me and going, "What about this?" And I'm like. Oh, it's unplayable. He goes, oh, you'll be all right. You can do it. So another weekend gone. Yeah, you can do it. <laughs> another you can, weekend you can gone. And, and I go, all right then. But it's a nice challenge. <laughs> and plus, I like to push the push sure. the pipes into... Everyone loves into, a challenge. Into a t- so, like, that's the thing. Like, that's why Tawamis is going to bring out the best in every single person because all of the, the great geniuses mm-hmm. like a Troy have to actually be challenged just to even live that's yeah. what they're about like they're about pushing the limits and how do i bring a new instrument into metal like so he he needs to be stretched and he does and he enjoys match. it and yeah. like that's something like been a really common conversation piece between every single one of the band members when they talk about Tuomas, is when right? they talk about tuomas it's like he gave me this really difficult vocal set it's like, like, i could do it and i like, I wasn't sure about it. And he's like, nah, I believe in you. You got this. And then, oh, well, I got it. Like He can instill confidence. He can instill confidence really well. And that's why it's so funny that the um, interviewer asked, he, he just made that comment, well, it's another weekend gone. <laughs> that right? was smooth. So smooth. <laughs> yeah, <it was. laughs> I love their chemistry. Oh, yes. Extremes into its limits. Mm. See how far I can take it. And then, I mean, it's a good way, I suppose, for you as well to keep on learning with, with this. Yeah, instrument. definitely, definitely. I, I, on this new album, there's a song called Harvest. Sure. Yeah, and the song it's I was got, of. It's got some really, really quite uh, acrobatic <laughs> piping on it. <laughs> so, acrobatic so piping? Live shows, yeah, it is going to be interesting in live shows. <laughs> and I, I got to sing on that one as well, which was really, really nice. Right, really then nice that's, that's the kind of the other thing I wanted to focus on, because, uh, well, Harvest is, is uh, the premiere track then, but yeah. um, 
what, what was it like for you to use your voice in, in a sense, in, in this prominent uh, a way for Nightwish? Because you haven't really in the past. Yeah, no, I, no, yeah. I hadn't. And I was, it, it wasn't something that I, that I um, pushed for or anything. I had no interest in singing at all in Nightwish. And uh, I was reluctant to even sing back in vocals wow. originally. But things changed. Yeah, how and things especially have changed. Especially on the last tour. Yeah. We made the lovely discovery that the three voices Mm. have a kind of beautiful texture when you put the three of them together because Marco's voice is very full on rock, his, his classic rock voice. Yes. Flo's voice is stratospheric. <laughs> and my voice is, is very... Um, Good way to put it. Uh, so I've been told he's very soft. Mm. So when you put those three yeah. um, textures together, you get quite a, an interesting and, s and beautiful sound. Mm. There's a song on the album called Endlessness and, and the... Yes. the the chorus is just, oh uh, it gets me every time. It, even though we, we are part of it, I, I can listen to it now without myself and okay. it sounds really beautiful. So I'm really excited about that, the, the vocal side of things. That's it, so when... So true, right? It's so true. And that's something that's really difficult to do is listen to yourself or rewatch yourself. It's hard when I edit and I have to hear myself sometimes. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I'll be honest, I don't rewatch a lot of the videos because it's really difficult for me to listen to myself and hear myself. And so for him to be able to say that he's been able to disconnect and as a way, he, mm -hmm. he said, I'm able to forget myself and really enjoy the chorus. Uh, yeah, and absolutely. The way, and the texture of what it sounds like because we are our own worst critics. We so all it's are. so hard to listen to yourself without criticizing it and just being able to enjoy it. So I'm really, really cool to hear that he's able to like have that difference. And I think we all need to be able to have that ability so that we can also grow and appreciate what we're doing mm -hmm. while still being able to challenge ourselves without it being constant self-criticism. I agree, honey. And I, I also like what he said when it was the three of them and the way they complement each other. And mm -hmm. I really hope that Yuka, the basis for their next album, adds a little bit of that rock metal flair to help yeah. add to what uh, Troy and Flora are going to have to do with No Marco now. Absolutely. I'm actually it's really curious to see because I know what Yuka's voice sounds like. Exactly. So I'm curious to see if and how Tuamas will utilize that. Yes. Oh, man. Here we go. Twelve came to you with Harvison and said, "Well, here's this song, and I would like you to sing it." What was what was that reaction like? Well, the the original demo he sent me was was really off the wall. Okay, you know, it it, it oh, wow. really doesn't sound at all like the original demo, okay. what we've got now. Right. Oh, wow. Um, because it 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 just wasn't, it wasn't suitable mm. for it for Nightwish. But the idea behind it huh. was pure Nightwish, you know, and it's it's a big anthemic song. It's very rooted in uh, in folk music, really. It's sure. an anthemic right. chorus. It's the right. kind of very chorus to, yes. to sing around campfires, sure. you know. Yes, it is. So it's going to be nice to perform it live. And then, obviously, the, the, the first half uh, of the record, vocals, and, and mostly the band, uh, you want to hear your voice. And, and yeah, yeah. That, that was kind of the approach. Then on the second half, it's instrumental, and then there's a lot of orchestra, so not yeah. the, less of the band, but then the Union Pipes uh, show up every once in a while, and then yeah. there's, there are these elements. So what was it like um, figuring out how to do that second instrumental bit? Yeah, good where question. Where I you, yeah. uh, maybe, more, maybe I'm wrong, but may, maybe more than other band members uh, have a part in because of the number of instruments you can play. Yeah, yeah, well, that, that, that was definitely a factor. Mm. That. Flaw does some wordless vocals right. we, it was yeah. really important to disconnect uh, thematically from the first disc mm. it's beautiful that it's a double disc we really like the idea mm. that you have to get up and change the disc and put another disc in yeah. it's very old style but it gives people time it really to separate the before they go on the next part of the voyage kind of thing right. yeah so but it's a, a story for interrupting, but it's also um, kind of what you mentioned earlier about the metal audience, that they want this tangible thing, and yeah. the, it's a little bit effort, yeah. more effort to put it on. And you yeah, want them yeah, to be yeah. engaged with it. Like, absolutely. The metal people that I know all are all about getting vinyls and stuff compared to, like, any yeah. other um, music genres that I know. It's all about, like, definitely people who are metal lovers are audiophiles. 
and they really care about um, whether it's done in like digital or listening to it in um, its original acoustic with vinyl because it has a different sound. It has a different resonance in yeah. the music itself. And there is like what um, Troy is saying. Uh, there is a, a, a connection that you get when it is physical. Like we oh, all, totally you do. we all remember um, going and putting in the VHS and having to rewind it before you can watch a movie or, you know, having to go in and change the disc. You build a relationship with it. You build a relationship with yeah, it. That's memories. what's building key memories. Cause it's not just listening. You're using more than just one sense. Yeah. And that's what builds memories. That's what totally builds that does. emotional connection and yeah. relationship to it. And that's something that we're all disconnected from now when we have Spotify, Netflix, and all these streaming because we don't make that physical connection the same way. Yeah. And he's all about that. And it's it's really yeah. cool. I'm so happy that he brought up Harvest and Endlessness because that really was where I thought Troy shined the most on Absolutely. the newest album too. So that's really cool. A bit more. It, fil- it fills me full of o- optimism mm. for the future. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, the, the, uh, no also I've, I've noticed recently a lot of kids are starting to reject. Mm. Uh, a lot of kids are starting to think, Yes. my parents lived in a completely different way to this and they, they experience things that I'm just not experiencing. You know, mm. most kids nowadays experience nothing but a screen in their bedroom and, and yeah. they don't get out much. So um, I like... I like that. I like the physical world to be mm-hmm. pushed to the forefront. Right. That's what I want. I want to see that more. I want to see people being more active That's a in nice the real switch. world rather than you know digitally. <laughs> I think it's. I think it's better for the soul. You know. And then, sorry, I was interrupting you, but you were talking about. Yeah. Um, uh, no. no, I'm blanking. Uh, you were talking about. Uh, the, the, how, how you were more um, prominent on, on the second part, kind of the instrumental. Mm. Bits oh, yeah, so, yeah. So what was your approach in a way? Or what your, Respect your, to keep that um, in. Yeah, yeah, there's absolutely. a piece called uh, Moors, mm. Uh, mm. and Moors. there's Illin Pipes on that. Yes. Mm. It was the, the only okay, instrument yeah. that could the go Moors, into, that, yeah, yeah. into that music. There was nothing else would, would, would have worked. Again, getting back to the, the beautiful, evocative nature of the Illin Pipes, how it can conjure up provocative um, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, an atmosphere and moors and it was it's a wild thing a wild place and the pipes really work beautifully but they also appear on ad astra the very last piece as well mm-hmm. because the pipes do have an anthemic side to them sure as yep. well mm-hmm. yeah Th- this might be a very stupid question but um it just popped into my mind just now but having played, because because for someone like me, I don't hear the Union Pipes every day or anything, no, you no, know. No. For someone who's, who's been around that instrument so much, um, do you discover new things in it? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I recently had a, a, a custom-made question. set in, a really good which question. are completely made out of stainless steel. Okay. Uh, it's, it's really oh. quite rare, uh, wow. but they're a lot more stable. The Union Pipes are very temperamental. Mm. Uh, to temperature change and things like mm. that. Oh, and even stainless yeah. steel doesn't help yes. that much, but it's it's been an improvement. But um, yeah, the, what what attracted me to the Ilan Pipes in the first place was when I first heard them as a kid, I had no idea what could be making the sound. I, I, th- I thought it was an animal. I thought it was an animal right. singing. Yeah, like a deer yeah. or something. So I couldn't, Straight nature. I couldn't imagine what could make such a sound, you know? So I was fascinated by them from, from day one. And then, um, as I, as I, uh, my dad got me my first set of pipes, and as I got deeper and deeper in Jumped there, out. I realised that this was a way that I could move into new areas of mm. music. I was never interested in being a folk musician, right. ever. Uh, I was always interested in taking the pipes into new and exciting areas, That's especially sweet. rock music. Mm-hmm. So for a time, it's always his goal on awesome. me from the piping society, you know, for plugging in like Bob Dylan did in the sixties. He's Ju- plugged Judas. in, yeah, yeah, Judas, Judas. So, um, but I, I absolutely revel in it. I revel right. in 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 playing with Apocalyptica and uh, okay. Cam, uh, Camelot and Sinatra. Oh, Arctica. pushing that on. I love Camelot doing all well. that, and I love doing yeah. the you know like the Bad Shepherds playing, uh, playing Clash and playing the Ramones and mm. stuff like that, and getting the pipes into that. It's, could you imagine? Fair enough. Excellent. It's going to pause um, for yeah. a
Um, I want. I really love that question because absolutely, it, you can find so many different things to do with instruments that you never thought you could do. Mm -hmm. Even I was raised more with like a lot of classical music. I played um, the baritone in a concert band. Yeah, absolutely. But I never really got into metal. And so what really got me going into like wanting to get into string and stuff like that was actually seeing someone use a traditional instrument right. in an untraditional way. Exactly. And I love how he just really dove deep into that, how even since being a kid, his whole thing was loving these traditional instruments that sound like nature itself. Yeah. In untraditional ways. Like to... a deer, like you said, that was so yeah. well said. Because I, I, whenever I hear the Illin pipes, I immediately think of out in nature, and it, it brings yeah, me to like those nature songs and like like going into the moors. I immediately knew these were the moors of the Highlands. Makes me even feel like Zelda like for me, which is Zelda -like awesome. Like is phenomenal. Yeah. And I really also wanted to touch base because he had mentioned that he had seen an entirely stainless steel set of Illin pipes, right. and that really was like, oh my goodness, because that would change the way they sound it would change everything about them because he said that illin pipes themselves are very temperamental to hot mm -hmm. and cold with um something i don't even know i'm not sure if i mentioned to you but with the violin because we're in such a cold climate yeah i have to get a special resin because of oh, the cold climate really or else it uh, gets too hard in the oh, cold wow. so it won't play correctly and so it was really cool that it's fully stainless steel how would that sound how would that change right right so like that was so cool to hear him like talk so passionately about these pipes that he it, loves so much it's been his like life goal to do this yeah. the whole time it's like pan went inside of him to spread his pipes everywhere yes. <laughs> you know it's like, amazing spread this music it is the best <laughs> bleed into everything yes to the album then because there's uh, one kind of uh and I, I want like i love that he kept um him trying to like oh i don't remember what the question was and then he like kind of said it and just how nice troy is about it absolutely it just like it's not a big deal y'all to like be human and like forget what you're gonna say and like yeah. it's actually nice to kind of see that stuff and it you know like because then you can see how they're reacting and if you admire people like this, that's how you should treat people, right? Absolutely, 100%. To discuss the themes a little bit with, with you, because uh, on Endless Forms, Most Beautiful, we I talked to you and we talked about how you had conversations with all of us and you, you yourself yeah. were very much into kind of that subject. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is, in essence, a continuation of that story. It so, is. Uh, what kind of conversations did you have amongst the band about kind of this, this um, idea of humans and nature and how yeah but, well it, it's interesting you should say because the greatest show on earth the final piece on the last album s seamlessly segues into the first track on this new album music? so music right. comes out of the greatest show on earth i'm sure some people will do this once <laughs> the album's out but the very end of all the atmospheric uh, all the um uh, natural uh, noise that's going on mm -hmm. Nat not noise, <laughs> all the natural beauty. <laughs> and then it, you hear this hit on the side of a cave wall and then it becomes music. So it, so it grows out of the last. So there is a, a real continuation. And, Beautiful. And that was conscious, really, okay. to take mm -hmm. it that was conscious, to the next wow. level and to expand on those themes that we enjoyed mm. so much, you know, in the last album. And then thematically then, because, um, well, it's about humans, it's about nature. I mean, we as humans are part of nature. We are nature, yeah. We are. Yes, How we do are. you see our inter... Well, we kind of touched upon it earlier, but our interaction Just with dirty. nature. There's, there's a song on there called, uh, called Anthropocene, Anthropocene which, which, yeah. which talks about this, uh, I think it's a time uh, distinction where yeah from, from measuring from the moment where humans kind of impacted the yeah. earth yeah 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 so yeah. so what what is your uh how do you view nature you grew up in cumbria i, I did i did grow up in cumbria um nature well it's 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 everything and you know they say you can see you, can, you know uh, a piece of grass coming through the pavement you know every it's everywhere and it's mm -hmm. our life and we as you say we're, we're part of it we're part of it I do have a very holistic um, uh, view of nature. I don't just see it as 
being out in the woods and in the wild or in, at the sea. It's mm -hmm. everywhere. I see it as in everything. Mm -hmm. okay. in everything. And uh, profound things that happened to me when I was a kid, you know, when I discovered Carl Sagan and uh, just the yeah. idea that we're all made of the same elements, you know, things like that and that we share 97% uh, of our DNA with a banana, you know, things like that are just mind-blowing. You know? <laughs> and it, it takes you to a deeper understanding of nature. Not so much an understanding because it's almost impossible. So, so, so many times. That stuff, but it fills you full of awe sure. and, uh, and fires your imagination, you know. And I think it's how many chromosomes? But anyhow, we're, we're I think we're, it's some, some crazy <laughs> stuff about being more closely related to yeast Right. than to orangutans or some <laughs> mad stuff but it's it's all beautiful and it, yes. it fills me <laughs> full of really inspiration beautiful. You know? right. and and makes me feel more connected it makes me feel and finally then what, what role Todd does music right. play in this kind of sorry uh, <laughs> I, I don't know what what how to describe it but kind of this this juggling at that between nature and technology yeah yeah and yeah, yeah. And... well for me it plays a, a massive vast uh part because of all the arts, music is, is well, it's really ineffable. It, 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 uh, the, the idea that frequency, frequency changes mm. can make you cry or make you yeah. laugh or uh, cause a, an emotional response is, is deep magic to me, mm. deep magic. And you yeah, know, do some, it. some music. I love it what is. he's talking about with this. And I, I have to say, I. I've never heard someone use the word ineffable so correctly in a sentence ever in my life. And it just shows well how on poke on point he is and well spoken he is, which I'm not. <laughs> but like Yes. That was phenomenal. Absolutely. And it it is ineffable to think that just frequency of music can affect us so deeply it is it is a magic though it's a liberal mm -hmm. art it's like a sacred science and like that's why there's degrees yeah. that you can get like your masters for music right with all the instruments there Absolutely. is and you can really like take it to the next level always and people are pushing it all the time and something that's so cool about music as well as i love how when you bring up that it, music is a sacred science because music is also math it's just done in a different yeah. way oh absolutely right and that's why it's so funny because like i'm not good at math but i can do music yeah you can sure count music way better than me i have really good timing <laughs> but i can probably beat you in timetables absolutely here we go <laughs> yeah this is a great interview only a little oh, bit left yeah. so thank you everyone nightwish army for being here here we go music affects me deeply and the nature the nature of music i'm hit with it again every time mm. whenever i hear some marvelous music i think what is this what what exactly am i actually listening why is it doing this to me mm -hmm. you know so it's whereas uh, the visual arts uh, it's a different thing altogether you yeah. respond through but yes. music's mm. intangible. It's, mm. it's invisible. It's I, I love it. And one, one final thought about <laughs> this thing, because uh, I also hear nature being are certain practices in nature being described as a symphony kind of of, of, of uh, yeah yeah atoms and whatever the, the inner workings are. Yeah. I'm not smart enough. <laughs> but um, so can you see kind of the music in anything in a way? Oh, definitely, yeah. Uh, all, all the uh, the great composers uh, used to say say so much, you know. And, and uh, the the English composer Delius used to uh, try to describe the flapping of wings mm. in in music. Mm. You know, how how do you do that? How do you do you, uh, describe a gull flying over close to the waves? And somehow, with a with an oboe and a harp, you, you do it. You can do it. You can. Again, it's magical. It's 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 a a mystery, and all we can do as musicians is try to to plug into it and try to make contact with that. Yeah, I exactly. Think. Make contact. Um, with but that's but that's a different type of music. I mean, pop music is wonderful. Sure. And uh, I've always felt that there's there's music there's music for entertainment. And then there's music for self-discovery. Yeah. Yes. The two vastly separate things. They're both tightly Needed. related. But it always feels like uh, there's nothing like having a good dance around to Bon Jovi's Living on a Prayer or something. <laughs> sure. yes. But then you go deep into the heart of Lohengrin by Wagner or, or into mm -hmm. uh, The Lark Ascending by Vaughan Williams. 
that's quiet. You've got to be quiet and you've got to be on your own. And Absolutely. that's the journey that you've got to I take. Love those yeah, well, one last question, and yeah. this is very quickly. But um, I don't know if you did, but w when this album was finished and you li listened to the entire thing uh, all in sequence, what, what was your kind of initial feeling? Or uh, initially, I was too self-conscious. Okay. I was yeah. I, I was in it, and, mm. and Floor and Thomas and Marco and Empu and Kai, and we were all there, and I was listening to it like that. But now. I can listen to it disconnected. I can listen to it yeah. uh, without me. So Troy isn't in it, and I can listen to it yeah. objectively. Uh, That's so with a, cool. With a pure uh, Good stage a, to be in. A pure desire to find more in it mm. than I that, that I just couldn't do when I was in it. When I was, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Sure. Now you it, can focus on this. Yeah, thing. I can. I can focus on the whole picture rather than the Troy bits and the <laughs> Thomas bits and the floor bits and all that. And it's wonderful. I think it's. Uh, and it's the, f it's the first album, I think, where I think every single moment of it does it for me. Mm. Every moment. On other albums, some bits I like better than others. But this, the mm -hmm. whole thing, I absolutely I love it. I love it. It is I think it's, music, it seems It's like. new and I think it's fresh. There's elements of it that haven't existed in Nightwish before, but yet it's still quintessentially Nightwish. So, which is a fine line. We sure. haven't sold out. We haven't done anything like that. We... We're still trying to push it and, and be more ambitious with what we can do with with this band, you know, yeah. Nightwish. I think that's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Troy, thank you very much for your time. You're very wow. welcome. Thank you. Brilliant. I can't believe he Whoa. got all these. Thanks. That's it. That was splendid. Oh, that's good. Nice, really, Troy. really good thank stuff. You, you certainly you. know how to do interviews. Nice. Nice. See, that's cool. You can learn a lot from that. Yeah. Because that's the flow. And he you got to be able to ask questions that just come in the spur of the moment because that's kind of like music. Mm -hmm. You can't really pick the best questions or the best riffs. You have to kind of play it out and see what's going to come through and what's the best yeah. topic that you need to talk about. And sometimes what you have planned, if you're too robotic, it's not always going to turn out the best. And I think yeah. with someone like a Troy and, and everyone from Nightwish, Absolutely. they're all such geniuses and in the spur of the moment. And they're willing to also make changes and adjust yeah. and grow. So they can jump with you. And like, you got to mm -hmm. just like that's because we also want to interview everyone, but specifically Nightwish uh, members too of one day. And this is a good way for us to learn and to hear yeah. that stamp of approval right at the end. Like, this is like good job this is how you do an interview from troy that's that's really that's incredible huge. to hear that's so incredible to hear yeah because like that's that's such a um amazing feeling when you're talking to someone and interviewing someone because you are in such a vulnerable spot yeah especially and because then, they're face to face right and you're face to face yeah. there where it's like we do it with zoom that's different yeah being in that face to face and that vulnerable and like it's it's nerve wracking. It is, yeah. but they have such good chemistry, uh, face culture and Nightwish with all the band members. Yeah. So they're able to it's have incredible. these more like conversations. Yeah. Versus just like rigid interviews. So it's it's beautifully done. Yeah, it's like the best friends, and it's just like seeing each other again after yeah. a couple of years. And how's it? it's just catching up, and it's such a good vibe. And I do love these interviews, too, because you always find out so much about them personally. Mm -hmm. And Troy is one of my favorite people because of the way he expresses himself, his enthusiasm, but just his wit. And also, yeah. it's like he actually has penetrating thoughts, too. So he's he like, does. he's someone that I would love to have around for the creative flow that he would give. And like the inspiration that he's given him to to, to Wamas and how yeah. much I feel like you miss him when you watch old nightwish and it's like there's only five people there what's missing yeah and like, oh, you... it's troy troy's not <laughs> where's, there? Troy? where's troy like, so like it's yeah. really cool that they have him full time now and that he's at this p place where now he can listen to nightwish and be kind of outside of it where he he can experience yeah. it like we experience it and that's like a brilliant thing right it is a brilliant thing that takes a lot of self-discovery and reflection and being a like you said someone who has it who's a deep thinker who's able yeah, to get into those um different spaces um, philosopher a philosopher <laughs> and it's so cool because every single member of nightwish is such a philosopher so just imagine when they're going out to their like um 
their band meetings, their like band meetings, meetings and camping yeah. where they go out to the woods because that's totally. where they have their best ideas and thoughts and conversations yeah. and Having that creative flow just goes through. Then there's Empu. Like, and then there's Empu. <laughs> I don't know. He's... But Empu's like Empu's like the silent but deadly. Silent but deadly because he doesn't do many interviews. He. Yeah. We don't know much about him. He's like this mysterious man that we all want to get to know, but That's we true. can't. Does Space Culture got one with oh, Empu? Oh, did they have one with Empu? Because if not, then maybe oh. that's the golden goose that everyone's going to try to catch. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's who we got to go. Good job again, Space Culture. And thank you so much, Carol, for this amazing request. Again, we really appreciate being able to see Tuwamis floor and now Troy come down the yes. rabbit hole. And it's awesome to understand them as people as well as artists because they do make magic. And that's why we love them so much. So we hope you had a good time, everyone. But we are now exiting the rabbit hole, folks. Thank you so much for Face Culture doing this interview. And thank you, for Carol, for bringing this down the rabbit hole. Peace and love, everyone. God bless you. Take care and bye for now. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more Enter the Chronicness. Thank you all so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. If you had a good time and you are new to the channel and you don't want to miss the next one, here is a very easy way that you can make it to our next one by hitting the subscribe button. If you liked what you heard on this video and you want to support this artist, then an easy way to do that is going right here. And I think we have a really good video for you right here that we think you will enjoy. Thank you all so much. See you next time.